to the recreation. If God's a loving God, okay, and he creates a soul that's then affected by parents and over the eons of time the creation's gone on and the, the level of soul, it's a, the density that the souls have created into, how can God allow that to happen? When we keep passing on our, our rubbish to our children and our grandchildren and yep. so on and so forth. And how does God allow that to happen if he's yeah. a loving God? Why hasn't he stopped it or given us some more information sooner? Right. Um, <coughs> firstly, the question that you're asked comes from an emotion within you. Where, and, and by the way, many of you have this emotion where you do not trust God. Right? And you don't trust God because you see all of these things happening around you that you see as evil or bad. And then you wonder how God can relate, can actually allow these things to occur how he could have created his laws in such a manner that allow these things to occur. Now that emotion in itself drives a lot of questions in our own mind. Do you follow me? So firstly recognise that it's an emotion that's driven the question. And it's a good question. Right. So here's God. What God did was created something, and that is he created the potential if I can still present you right. right. So <coughs> the first thing God did was God set up all of these laws of the universe. And the laws of the universe existed before the universe existed. Right. You could say the laws of the universe are like a skeleton in which the universe has to live. Now, the laws of the universe are created in such a way that God created the potential for everything. So God created the potential for evil as well as the potential for good. And the way, the way God did that was God created this thing, this beautiful gift actually that you have called, called free will. Now, at the moment, we often use our free will in total disharmony to God's laws. And oftentimes, we often don't see our free will being exercised and the effects that it actually has on everybody around us. Uh, yesterday I asked the audience, um, how many of the ladies had a diamond ring on their finger? How many of you ladies have got a diamond ring on your finger? Okay, so quite a number. Do you realise how many people died to put this diamond ring on your finger? Yes, it's a whole movie. Yeah. Can you see that just your choice to have a diamond ring on your finger created the death of somebody? Now that's a pretty confronting statement, isn't it? No? Lucky we ne people never die. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky that they actually continue to live on right. in the spirit world. <laughs> but can you see that just that one choice that seems innocent to us actually has so much power that it actually finishes up killing people on the other side of the world where these diamonds come from. Right? Now can you see how, how we can't say God allowed something when we use our free will to make a choice that created some badness? You follow me? Can't God see that that free will that it gave humans in creation is destroying the planet? It's destroying... No, it's not the free will. The free will is not destroying the planet. It's the person's choice to use the free will in disharmony with love that destroys the planet. You see, it's like, it's like I create a knife, right? I make a great big knife and I cut up my veggies with it. That's a pretty good use for a knife, isn't it? But I could also slit your throat with it. But now, who made the choice to slit your throat? Did the knife make the choice? Isn't the knife a handy tool? Just like this free will is like a beautiful gift. The knife is a gift. If you want to start cutting up, cutting up some veggies, isn't the knife mm -hmm. the best tool to do it? Mm -hmm. And yet, we can use that tool to completely damage somebody to the point where we've killed them. Can you see how the giving somebody a gift doesn't mean the responsibility rests with the gift giver? It re the responsibility rests with the person who uses this gift in the way that they've chosen to use it. 
Does that make sense? Before the soul separates, then do we get a choice not to separate? <laughs> no, you can Well, <laughs> at that moment, you don't have choice, no. Well, therefore, that's, you know, I don't have free will, do I? I if I chose not to separate, then my parents couldn't have passed on their, their stuff to me. But if your parents chose to clear away all their emotions, you would have no emotions to deal with. Yeah, but they haven't. And what parents have, no one has. But all of us have the choice to do it. We yes, can do it. But you're saying there's only a few of us that have gone and you know, have evolved back far enough to recreate again. So no parents have really... So what's your emotion? I'm angry. I am angry. I'm angry to think that I was created and I've done my best to do it right. Yeah. And my problem, especially with drinking in my family, mm -hmm. has been passed on to my grandchildren yeah. and my children. Yeah. From my mother and father, I yeah. don't drink. Yeah. But you know that, the, that that emotion that creates drinking has obviously been passed down to the subsequent generations. Yeah. And you've done your best to prevent that, and now you're feeling really angry with God. You want to be angry with someone. Well, and so I'm angry at the, the way creation works. Is yeah, but it, but it, but while you hold on to this anger, you're denying a deeper emotion. Do you know what that deeper emotion is? No. Does anybody have an idea what it might be? Rejection. Rejection. Resentment. Well, resentment is really anger that sees. There's a deeper emotion. Worthiness. Sorry? Not feeling worthy? Well, there's, there's firstly, let's look at it in terms of a pleasure and pain. Is the underlying emotion going to be pleasurable or painful? Painful. Pain. Okay. So it's going to be painful. And what kind of things might need to happen with this underlying emotion rather than staying in anger? See, the problem yeah. is that we can stay in anger as long as we want because we have free will. God gives you the choice. You can stay in your anger and your blame as long as you want. Right? And that, for many people, they pass into the spirit world and they stay in their anger for another hundred years or two hundred years or three hundred years until they exhaust their anger. You don't have to do that. You can actually <coughs> decide right now to, to stop staying in this anger and get into the pain. Because what it is, is we're not wanting to feel the pain. That's why we get angry. Uh, sorry. How about a schizophrenia? Um, can I deal with mental illness type things a little bit in the future? Yep, that'd be good. You know how you said everyone has free will? Well, what about the people in communist China? Yep. Like, they don't really have it, so how does that work? Um, free will isn't dependent upon what other people make you do. Free will is a, is a condition inside of yourself. So, for instance, if a person came up to me and put a gun in my hand and said, you've got to shoot that person, Right? I would just refuse and refuse until they kill me. Now, to me, that's my exercise of free will. Now, to you, it may seem like I'm being forced to do something wrong, but to me, that, that's not ha happening at all. I'm not being forced into doing anything. I don't have to do whatever anybody is telling me to do. So every single person in communist China doesn't have to do what their government tells them to do. They're just in so much fear that they all continue to do it. Uh, and this is where fear often is what causes us to use our free will or to dampen our free will to such a point that we no longer feel we can make choices. The truth is that fear doesn't need to dominate your life. Uh, so that's very important to understand. 